Hi, I'm Nick from ViaEngines.com and I'm just going to give you a video, a very quick one, not too much detail I hope, on setting up the points and timing on your Via 7 or 12. So both of these engines look very similar to this and I'll show you the tools which you're going to need. So you're going to need a feeler gauge which is 17 thousandths of an inch that's not metric that's imperial um, you need a screwdriver with a flat blade in nice condition uh, to, and you uh, that's basically all you need but you might find also useful a tape measure and uh, a white marker or a light colored marker and a head torch and most useful of all is some fairly powerful spectacles if you have got less than perfect vision and less than perfect light. So basically the first step we want to do is to um, get the uh, the timing marks established. Now on the flywheel there is a little notch but it's nearly invisible especially if you've got a lot of rust. I've just refurbished this economy engine. I hope you like red it's unusual. <laughs> but um, there's a little notch here. Now I personally am a bit of a perfectionist and I don't trust that notch so if you get the spark plug out and put a long clean screwdriver through the spark plug hole you can actually feel the screwdriver going up and down and then you can rock it until you find the exact top dead centre of this and then you find the position of the mark is near the top of this buttress on a Fire 7. So I'm just going to put a bit of paint on the, the notch on the flywheel to make it easy to see. And then I'm going to write T, the top dead centre there. Okay, so that's the same for the Via 12 as well. But what you find is that the firing point is slightly different. Oh, it's 50 millimetres on a Via 7, which you'll see is exactly the bottom of this buttress. So the point should just be starting to open when this flywheel top dead centre mark is 50 degree, 50 millimetres before. It's 36 millimetres on a via 12. So you'll have the points just opening about here. But this is a 7, as you can see, the spark plug's not on the front. It's only the via 12, uh, the via 7 that has the spark plug behind. So um, I'm going to mark make sure the points just open at that point. So I verified this mark. The reason I've done this is because sometimes the key which connects the crankshaft to the flywheel can have a little bit of play. So I like to make sure I know exactly where top dead centre of the piston is, not just rely upon the flywheel. It may have moved a few degrees. Having said that, it's not that sensitive. So now I'm going to set the points. So the points should be just starting to open about here and they should be closed. I'm going to get down and look and I'm going to use my screwdriver now just to um, put the heel of the points in. And obviously remember if you've just changed the points you need the heel away from the flywheel otherwise when you push it in if the heel's too close it will snap the end off and the points are ruined. So at the moment the points are out because I've just replaced them. I'm now going to adjust them, free off the uh, tightening bolt. There's a couple of slots for my screwdriver. I can get a gap roughly 17 thou by eye. And now I'm going to rotate the flywheel round until I can see it's open but not moving. And in this area, the fact that mark turns out to be exactly vertical it's now in the ideal position for setting. So I'll clean any dirt off of these feeler gauges. I'm going to put in my gauge and what I want to feel is very slight resistance. It's a bit loose so I will adjust that a bit tighter. So putting this screwdriver in if I go anti-clockwise, if I go clockwise it reduces the gap. That's that's still slightly loose. That's just about perfect. Yeah, tighten it up. Always check after tightening. 
Yeah, I would say that's a bit loose now. So tightening sometimes changes the gap. So clockwise to tighten. That feels a bit tight, but when I tighten it up, it's opening the gap. That's absolutely perfect now. So that's within one thousandth of an inch of the 17th hour target. So now what I need to do is to check the rotation of the back plate inside here and I bring it round to the firing point which is they're just starting to open visually uh, so they're closed and as I go clockwise they're just slightly open and now I check the position of the mark and you'll see if I can zoom in here for you that that mark is exactly lined up with the bottom of the um, plate here. There's a bit of parallax error here. Let's try and take it off the stand for you. So yeah, they line up nicely and the points here are just on the verge of opening. So if I turn that sl any amount clockwise, you'll see the points start to open. So that's the point. You can check this with a meter making a click noise, but in good light I find it's visually quite easy just to rock the flywheel backwards and forwards until you see it just starting to open and they say right that is the point the spark's going to happen. It needs to happen when this is lined up with the mark on the flywheel and then after that it carries on and you'll end up at top dead centre. So there you go. That is how to set up the timing and um, I'll put this back on the tripod, put a spark plug in and hopefully you'll see that that works lovely. So yeah, basically I've just rid this up quick for you. Um, I've just put a spark plug here, it's just resting on the um, the top here. It's, it's, should, the spark should be able to jump through this, if I just turn this over. And if you can see that lovely spark I should point out that this engine has got no fuel in it I've just rebuilt it otherwise it would be dangerous to put the spark near the hole so if you're testing this in reality suggest you do at your own risk is uh, lay the spark plug along the adjuster slot of the um, belt or somewhere near the front of the engine touching a bolt and if you don't want to risk getting an electric shock, then use a cable tie to tie the spark plug so it's touching the uh, chassis on the outside. And then uh, you can freely rev it over and see if you've got a spark. And also you won't see the spark if you've got bright sunlight. I've just pulled this garage door down a little bit just to make it darker. But if you've got all of the curtains open and the cockpit covers off and the hatches out, and you may not be able to see the magneto strength spark. It's a brand new spark plug, so it was doing exactly what I expected, which is to have the spark only between that central um, electrode and the bent tip. What you don't want to see is a spark which is going around the circumference of the earth and not just on the bent tip, or um, an orange colour which means weak. The other thing is because of a brand new spark plug you've got a nice white piece of ceramic there which is nice and clean. If you look at a plug which has been run a little while it's going to have this kind of brown colour to it so that's not a bad plug but you probably won't get a little blue spark there you'll get a brighter white spark when the plug's being used. Anyway, less about spark plugs um, they can be troublesome, and uh, this one, I've just thrown this away, it came out of this engine, it's an NGK B6, I mean look at the state of that, that's what this engine arrived with, and that insulator is absolutely filthy, and uh, it's obviously had a lot of corrosion in there as well, so don't waste your money on old plugs, the NGKs particularly I don't like. So I hope you enjoyed my video, if there's any questions, just ask and I'll be happy to oblige. This is Nick from ViaEngines.com 
support me through my website as I'm supporting all of you.